Hi, I'm Gavin. So if you've been watching all the other videos, I've sort of gone through some great moments in the Minolta autofocus sort of arc. But as with all good things, it must come to an end. And Minolta really went out on a high. Uh, their last, well, it was two. They released the professional camera called the Minolta 9. Then there was a TI version, which was a short run. And then they did the Minolta 7. I think it was 7 and 7 right. Now, the 7's really technical, but their last main, it was, I think it was more aimed at, in, what's that, what do they call it? In suit, amateur enthusiasts. But the Minolta 9 was squarely aimed at professionals. Now, at this time, we're sort of like Nikon F5, EOS 1V. So there's this group of, like the last gasp of, of like a professional film before the whole world just fell off a cliff and went into digital. Anyway, so what we're going to talk about today is the Minolta 9. This is a truly great camera. This literally, you pick it up. It is really weird. I was reading some reviews before I got on, reading some reviews, and it, everybody says you have to just hold it to understand it. And I totally get it now. It's the, it feels amazing. It feels like a proper camera. They've gone back to knobs and things like that, where, as you saw from the 9XI cameras like that, they drifted away, they all gone digital. It is just a remarkable piece of kit. It comes with a flash, so it was derided, obviously, by the critics, because no professional ham camera has a flash. But it has a flash you, Minolta flash you over the top, so you get the best of both worlds. Um, it's really, really solid feeling. It's got great features, amazing metering. The autofocus on this is faster than my Pentax K1, which is a proper digital camera. Super fast. It's got every feature a professional would need on a camera. I think it's got the fastest rewind ever um, on a film camera, but it's just a great thing. It had wireless flash. I mean, we're talking, you know, this is, what is this, 90s, 80s, 2000s, wireless flash. So you could get that. I mean, we talk, we're well before Wi-Fi, aren't we, with all this? Um, all the extra functions be built into it. It's just a beast of a camera. It's just brilliant though. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's got the early beginnings of like, you can remember all the data of how you expose the film onto a file. Um, so you could see what you shot on the roll, so you can remember. I don't know if you can offload it. I think you could do that on the 7. I don't know if you could do it on this. What's that there? It'd be a remote spot. But it remembers up to 10, 8 or 9 rolls of film, what you actually shot. So like, it remembers the aperture, remembers the shutter speed, those kind of things. Yeah, no, this, we'll do this on the table. This is just amazing. I can't believe how cheaply I picked this up. Again, um, you know, people are fighting over the F6s and F5s of the world. Just forget it, get one of these. The lenses are just amazing. This truly is a great camera in every single way. Anyway, let's look on the table. Okay, so we have the Minolta 9. Now, as you, this is a big jump back to the original format with knobs and stuff like that, as opposed to sliders and push button things. Um, over the left here, we have a whole cluster of things controlling the exposure compensation on flash and on the actual camera itself. The on off switch is, if you can see it here, it's really nice flip up. And then here, this is really cool. This is a blackout, you can see it, blackout for night photography, so basically no light leaks into the viewfinder, if you ever need any need for that. It's got a built-in diopter here, great for me. And then on the back of it here, we've got a lock, and then you've got a little tiny switch to flip between your metering modes. So spot, um, matrix or honeycomb on these, and um, center weighted. Then an AF button, and then a control dial, hang on, just jump back up the top. So let's turn it on, on. So you've not, like, really, really obvious. You've got program, aperture, uh, shutter priority, and manual. Now, if you wanted to go to aperture priority and you change the aperture, either one of these wheels on the front or the back, either one will change the change the aperture, saying the shutter. So if I switch to shutter priority, I'll roll the wheel there, roll the wheel there. Both of these are now controlled. Take the lens off. Careful. Both of these are controlled. When you switch to manual, if it comes to the front one, it's doing your shutter speed. Back one, 
is doing your aperture. That is just so simple, isn't it? Put that back to program mode. Okay, and now if we look underneath that dial, you can see it, there's extra controls in it. Um, basically, I don't know if you can see it very well. In here, this does the speed of the um, single shot, constant wind, timer, all those sort of functions built in. And that's underneath the dial. You do that with a little button here to control it at the front. Put it back on. Flip it over. And down here, I start on and off. You don't want that. Then you've got the whole wireless shenanigans I have not even got into yet. So wireless um, flash, standard flash, red eye reduction. Put that in the middle where it was. Then on the top, yeah, you've got the flash pops up here. This is what got a lot of derision on this camera, that the fact that it actually had a flash, which is ridiculous. And that's the top part. So let's turn them over. You've now got the front here, you've got single shot. What do we got here? This is single shot. That single shot constant automatic. I think this is a fun. I haven't actually played with this. I haven't actually played with that. I just left it on. What's that? Turn that around. Automatic. I think I haven't fiddled with that. I think that's single shot continuous and automatic not sure i'll double check that someone's going to find and put that in the comments i can't remember and then you've got autofocus and manual here uh, lens release depth of field there check depth of field check i think that's continuous focus continue focus autofocus it's an autofocusy thing i can't remember off the top of my head which one it is anyway yeah so this is just like one of those ones you have to pick it up. One of those really difficult to put down. It's really designed to use it properly. It, it's, it's just a great, great camera. I can't, I don't own a camera, another camera. I've got a lot of cameras. This feels like this shoots like this, or it, it feels like a proper camera. I mean, I've got, uh, so what is it called nikon f100 and i've got a pentax mz mzs that's a good camera though but they just don't feel like this the, the nikon especially doesn't feel quite anything quite like this um but yeah no again as i said i think i said it earlier on in the other video this has the one twelve thousand shutter speed so you can shoot someone directly in front of the sun or shoot bullets, you know, shoot, try and catch bullets if you can get the shutter to click at the right time. Uh, yeah, great camera. Um, if you can get these, and if you want to get a great autofocus camera, um, I really recommend the 9, the Minolta 9. The other ones are for fun, more like, you know, and I said I take them out when I get worried about I'm going to lose a camera. You know, but this is a serious piece of equipment. And this would, you know, if you owned one camera, I think this would be it. You'd never go wrong. These were thousands when they came out. This was like £150 or something. It's crazy. Thousands, thousands of pounds. And you can get them so cheap. Anyway, thank you for watching.